This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Saturday night at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in a bout that was streamed on the streaming app service known as The Zone. IBF welterweight champion Jerron Boots Ennis put his title on the line against David Avenisian. For Boots Ennis, this was the first time he defended the IBF title, a title which he did not win inside the ring. That belt was stripped from Terence Crawford, who had become the first undisputed world welterweight champion during the modern four-belt era. Crawford was stripped in November, a little over four months after he won the undisputed crown in a unification bout with Spence Jr. This was a peculiar situation because Spence held the IBF belt for six years, and during that stretch he only made a single IBF mandatory defense. And by the time he faced Crawford, it had been more than five years since he made that lone IBF mandatory defense. As a result, Ennis was promoted from so-called interim IBF champion to the real McCoy. The entire situation sucked all around, as is typical of the moves we see from the IBF and other shady alphabet bodies, because A, Crawford was unceremoniously stripped of the belt he had won in epic one-sided fashion against Spence, and B, Ennis was deprived of the opportunity to earn his championship inside the squared circle. Incidentally, Crawford is scheduled to face WBA junior middleweight champion Israel Madrimov on August 3rd, and Avenisian himself is a former victim of Bud Crawford, which inherently made Boots fight against the same opponent a logical point of comparison. Right out of the gate, Boots was very active firing away with his jab, and the size difference was apparent from the onset. It had been nearly six years since Boots last fought in front of his hometown crowd, and he appeared eager to make a statement in this one. True to form, Boots began working the body early, and Avenisian was trying to pick and choose his spots to counter. Late in the opening round, an accidental low blow that looked like something out of Bo Galata halted the action so Avenisian could recover. When action resumed, it was more of the same. A strong opening round for Ennis, where Avenisian did not do a whole lot. Boots continued doing good work in round two, and he began to start opening up more, mixing his attacks both upstairs and down. Slowly but surely, however, Avenisian began sneaking in some nifty counter shots of his own, and he was doing everything he could to make a fight of it. What started as mostly a mid-range kind of fight had quickly evolved into a phone booth slugfest, where both boxers were firing away in tight quarters. There were some great exchanges where both guys were really loading up, and even though Boots was generally getting the best of these exchanges, Avenisian was landing well too. Round 3 started with things back at mid-range, but it did not take long before the two were once again slugging away in tight. Ennis was still landing more and generally landing better, and the action had become a bit more selective and nuanced, but it remained a roughhouse close quarters engagement where neither guy was neglecting the body. And whenever there was a bit of distance between the two, Boots' advantage seemed more pronounced, but typically there was not a whole lot of space between them. Avenisian began taking the initiative more often early in round 4, and the intensity of the fight remained heated. Boots appeared to try and create more space and work from range, but Avenisian was closing the gap effectively. The bulk of the action was still taking place inside the pocket, and despite being outgunned on the whole, Avenisian continued battling admirably. In the midst of this methodical foam booth scrap, both guys continued sneaking in some solid work downstairs. But once again, Ennis had the superior firepower, even if Avenisian was doing a good job finding the holes in Boots' defense. Boots worked behind his jab to begin round 5, and Avenisian remained cool under fire where he was sneaky with the counter. It was truly fascinating stuff where Avenisian remained determined and kept it interesting despite losing the majority of the exchanges. Once again, the two reverted to battling inside the pocket, where there was a lot of really good old-school infighting on display. With just over a minute to go in the round, Booch drilled Avenisian with a brilliantly timed counter. 
Avenisian beat the count, and Boots showed a nice blend of aggression and patience with his spirited follow-up attacks. And to his credit, Avenisian was absorbing a lot of punishment and he stayed upright for the remainder of the round. After round 5, however, his corner stopped it and the fight was over. With the victory, Ennis made his first successful title defense, and he put forth a strong effort in this one. That knockdown in round 5, it was a situation where Avenisian landed a solid right hand, and despite eating the right, Boots countered it brilliantly without losing stride. And as far as the comparisons with Crawford, technically he stopped Avenisian quicker than Crawford, who knocked Avenisian out in round 6. Not that that matters really, but it provides a future talking point if a potential showdown between Crawford and Boots ever comes to fruition. But first, Bud has the fight coming up on August 3rd against Madrimov at 154, which will be shown on The Zone pay-per-view. The Zone has had some really fun fights as of late. Just in the last few weeks alone, we had Bam Rodriguez against El Gallo Estrada, and after that we had William Zapata going up against Giovanni Cabrera, and now this fight here between Boots Ennis and David Avenisian. These were all fun fights on the zone. And for anyone out there who does not currently have a subscription to the zone, I have provided a link in the description where you can sign up. Simply click the link in the description to subscribe to the zone. At the end of the day, I thought it was a strong effort from Ennis. And I understand the desire to want to make a big statement, the big fight being his first major championship contest, and the fact that it happened in Philadelphia where Boots had been out of action for a while, where ring rust comes into play. All things considered, it was by no means a bad performance. Not at all. If he were going up against a guy like Crawford instead of Avenisian, I'm sure he would have been more responsible and mindful on defense but he did show some vulnerabilities in this one, where I have to wonder if they won't come back to haunt him against a truly elite boxer down the line. Only time will tell. Best of luck to both Avenisian and Ennis going forward, and congratulations to Boots Ennis for the victory. I for one will definitely be tuning in next time Boots fights. What did you think of the fight? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.